down there, Chris. You still awake? <laughs> Good morning, Vibe. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to church. Um, yeah, what a crazy week we've had. What a crazy week um, I managed to make in a couple of nights. And just the sweetness of God is just so beautiful. Um, so yeah, I believe God's going to do even more today. Um, why don't you say hello to someone behind you, greet someone new, and um, welcome someone here today at church. <laughs> do you know, the first time I was ever in a church that turned around and said, welcome someone new, I was like, what? Because I went to a church that was very strict and you weren't allowed to talk to people until you're one meter out of the, the church after church finished. So whenever I was like, what? You get to welcome people? I didn't realize that, but it was the love of God I really felt when I turned around and seen people that loved each other because they're brothers and sisters. You know, God tells us in his word, um, Matthew 5, verse 47, to not only greet your brothers, but to greet all. So as we go through our week, remember when you're passing the stranger on the street to greet all the Bible tells us. You're a Gentile, he tells us, if you're not greeting everyone. So today, I really feel the presence of God in worship. You know, last night, um, I, was, I was here and I just couldn't help but clap my hands. And um, all day yesterday, I was built in a fire and I had black thorns and I've, I've still got these black thorns in my hands. And every time I clapped my hands last night, I was like, ow, ow. And I just couldn't stop clapping my hands, praising God. And I really feel that it brought me to the cross where Jesus had the thorns and they were real thorns. And he was not only thorns, but it was nailed. And I just felt his love and to remind us that we are gonna praise him today like never before. We are gonna dance before the Lord like never before. So Lord, come and do your thing. Come and make your way, Lord. Holy Spirit, come and strengthen every brother and sister, every new person here today, Lord. Bless them. May they find you, Lord. May you strengthen them. May your words of knowledge flow. May your fire come, Lord. May your fire come in presence, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So we worship you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together and sing. Thank you so much. Let's stand. Oh, we are excited to be in his presence today. Are you excited to be in the presence of the Lord today? Somebody just close the staircase there at the back door, please. Thank you. You won't lose any kids. <laughs>
This is a house of worship. This is a place of prayer. Where every demon travels. Where we proclaim your name. This is a so
Cause I still believe you move, I still believe you speak.
We love you, Jesus. Break our walls down. Come on, church. Spirit, break out. Spirit, break out. Break our walls down. Lord, we pray today, Holy Spirit, that you would 
break our walls down. We pray, Holy Spirit, Lord, that we need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. We need you. Fear and worry can dominate our hearts, anxiety and problems and relationships and life. But, Lord, we need you. We need you. Lord, I thank you that when we're in your presence, you minister to us, you help us, you fix us, you heal us, and then you send us. Lord, I pray today for your goodness, your mercy, your grace. Spirit, break. Spirit, break out. Come on, church. Break our walls down. Spirit, break out. Heaven, come down. Lord, you're what we want. You're what we need. You're what we want. You're what we need, Lord. Lord, there are too many walls in our lives. There are too many walls in my life. There are too many walls in your life. Break our walls down. Our wall of pride, our wall of self-protection, our wall of unforgiveness, our wall of wrong looks and wrong thoughts and bad attitude. Break our walls down, Lord. Break all them down, Lord, so that we are free because every wall holds us back. Every wall pushes us away. Every wall keeps people out. I want to thank you, Lord, that you came and you died to bring walls down. Spirit break out. Spirit break out. Come on, church, begin to pray that over your heart. Holy Spirit, break out over my life. Lord, break down every wall, break down everything. Highlight anything that's in the way. Highlight anything that could get in the way. And help me with your help to say, Lord, come, bring these walls down. Jesus, you're wonderful. Jesus, you're wonderful. Yeah. Go for it.
Praise you, Jesus. Lord, as we come around your table, as we break the bread for your body, and I say drink the blood for the juice. Lord, we look at the cross. We look at the suffering that Jesus died for our sins. Lord, you give me a vision here this morning in worship. I've seen Jesus walk across the stage and he had a map. He had one of them old maps with a wooden shaft and one with the dangly ends on it. And my experience with them, they smear in dirt. They're, they're not really good. You've got to dip them in the water a lot to clean the floor. And the Lord pointed to the broom and he said, it's about who's using the broom. It's about who's using the map. And I've seen the Lord look out across the room today and then I hear them say get your shoes off because I'm coming to clean them I'm coming to clean your feet brothers and sisters and as the, the last supper Jesus cleaned all the disciples feet and he wants to remind us today you who knows him he is here to come and wash your feet not like the dirty old mop that's gonna smear in dirt with a teenager using it. With the love of the Father, He is coming to clean all the old, all the dirt out of your life. And as you walk to the table, I feel like some people need to be told now, on the side, on the side, the bread is there. Go now, you're ready. Go now, you're ready to receive communion. You're ready to sup with him. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we read from your word today. We read from your word of how you tell us to break bed. After taking the cup, he gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to them saying this is my body given for you do you feel that church do this in remembrance of me in the same way after the supper he took the cup and said this is the cup is a new covenant in my blood which is poured out for you you know I used to think communion was about two steps about the bread and about the wine, about the body and about the blood. But he remembers in verse number 20, Luke 22, verse 20, in the same way after supper, he took a cup and said, this is my new covenant. When you drink from this cup, you're saying yes to his new covenant. You're coming and you're walking a life that is clean. Now you can go back out that door and you can go back to the dirty old floors and the dirty old ways, but God says, I come to clean your feet and I'm not a teenager. I'm someone that comes and does a real job. Someone that comes and cleans out the filthy cobwebs and not only cleans the floors, but cleans every part of your house, every part of your body, you're a temple. The Lord tells us we are a temple. When you say yes to him, so Lord, come and help the church to kick off our shoes, Lord. Help us to kick off our shoes and make us ready 
to have our feet washed, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So as we go to the wine, we think of your blood that was shed. As we go to the bread, we think of your body. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Church, we're taking communion today, and, you know, we're just thinking about the garden. But you know the thought that we've got to remind ourselves of? It's not that I'd love to be in the Garden of Eden with him. The thing that met Eden special was communion with God. You can have communion with God today, tomorrow, the next day. You don't need Eden. Eden was not the special place God was. God was the special place. And when we're with him, he's the river of life. 
He's the sustainer. He's the provider. He's the one who is good. And so, church, I encourage us. Don't pine for a day that's been. Enjoy today. He is alive. He is here. Amen. Come on, the Lord is good. Lord, I pray for every person. I pray for every family. I, I pray, Lord, that your sovereign hand is upon every single situation. Church, we can rest in the knowledge that God is for us. Lord, I pray for recent diagnosis of people that have told me recently about family friends and neighbors and family friends that have suddenly been diagnosed with incurable diseases. But Lord, you're the God who can do anything. You're the God who can resurrect. You're the God who brings back to life. You're the God who doesn't bring it back to where it was, but gives us something far better. You're the God who transforms everything. And so, Lord, I bring every worry, I bring every anxious thought, I bring every prayer petition before you, knowing that if you have done it before, you can do it again. Knowing that if you spoke it before, on the night when you wish you were about to be betrayed and you could speak of victory, then today I can claim victory and stand in victory because I know that the Lord has already won. The cross did it. Everything was done. Now we live in the breakthrough. And so, Lord, I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your goodness. And I ask you, Lord, that we would, you would extend your grace into every heart and every life. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Come on, let's praise the Lord. Will you praise the Lord with me? Come on, we love you, Lord. Thank you, guys. Danielle is going to come, and I want you to give her a big hand as well, eh? Come on, give her a big hand as she comes. All right, well, good afternoon. I put on a big jumper today, and I'm sweating in here. And I went to bed last night with a fleece on. I don't know what's going on. It's either me or it's the weather. I'm not really sure. Anyway, we've got another jam-packed week for you coming up, so listen up. We're back tonight and tomorrow night at half past seven with live worship with our 24-8 um, worship that's been going on all week. And the worship room will be open all day if you just want to drop in at any point for that. Uh, Tuesday is Baby Club at 10 a.m. If you haven't booked in, get booked in. If you want to invite someone along or tell someone about it, you please do so. Wednesday, uh, worship and prayer up here uh, at 8 o'clock Wednesday evening as usual. And then Thursday kicks off the Alpha course at quarter past seven. If you'd like to, to book on to that, come along. Uh, you're more than welcome. If you know anybody that you'd like to invite them, please do so. And there are little uh, flyers on the way out that you can take to hand to someone. Also, uh, Friday night, there is no kids club and there's also uh, no youth club either. And that's because that kicks off Vibe Camp. That starts at uh, 6 p.m on a Friday evening. If you're booked in, great. I hope you're packed. Uh, if you're not booked in, then it's not too late. There are still a few spaces for that. Or if you'd like to come along uh, on the day pass on the Saturday, you can still book in for that. But if you're thinking about that, then get in touch ASAP, just so as we know for catering and things like that as well. That brings us right back around to Sunday. Can you believe it? 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock in-person service here in the building and 11.30 online. And just something um, to put in your diary uh, coming up in the next few weeks. Vibe Girl is back. That's our ladies ministry. Uh, we're here on Saturday, the 30th of September, uh, probably seven, half seven, something like that. And lastly, if you're new here today, we do have a connections desk. Make, please make yourself known to that on the way out. Or if you want to know anything more about what's going on in the life of the church, you can find it out there also. Thank you. Wow, yeah. Thank you, Danielle. So Danielle mentioned we have been having 24-7 worship, which, I mean, we were pretty close to having people in here worshiping all the time. Some of these guys are crazy. Uh, but what we did do was we kept our worship flowing regardless if it was a pre-recorded person or it was a live person in this building. Uh, we kept the worship flowing. Uh, and we're going to chat a tiny bit about it today. But I want to encourage you a couple of things. The Lord is here and his presence is here. And he wants to transform you and wants to change you. And I just want to encourage you with that. Because it can be easy to go, oh, I've just come to another thing. I've, I've just come to another service or another meeting. No, the Lord is here and you are here and that changes everything. Okay, before we go on, our given, the guys have put the slide up on the screen. Uh, we are not given to get anything from God. We are given back what's already his. He gives us a simple formula for life. Give what you have. Give your first fruits. Give your 10% in the tithe. You can read about it in the word of God. 
And he says, if you will give to me, it will show your heart, it will show blessing. And it brings to the kingdom of God, of course. And so it's not us that needs your money. It's God saying, will you do it from a heart? Will you do it from the, the heart that he has given you, knowing that he has blessed you with all things? So you can give on the screen, of course. You can give on the way out. Or you'd, maybe you do it online, and that is a blessing. And thank you so much. Well, look, if you haven't done it already, I, I think Andrew did it earlier. But let's do it again. Turn around and say hello to someone. In case somebody else is coming in that didn't get in hello, we want you to say hello. Uh, it's nice to be with each other. Uh, and I know some of us are still in holiday mode. We're trying to get back into September. But we're, we're making a move. We're, we're trying to get there. Uh, but I want to just say, church, if you have not got to our worship, we're probably going to keep at this the next 45 minutes or so. Come down some evening. Come down some evening. We've only got two left. Uh, so we've got tonight at 7.30, and it'll go on to all hours. So if you can come down at 11 o'clock for half an hour, come down at 11 o'clock for half an hour. We will be here, probably boogieing to the, in the presence of God, but we will be here. Uh, and after that, we usually become delusional. But we'll still be here. So if you are free and available, come down. If not, watch online. It is a good, a good alternative, but it's a poor substitute from being in the presence of God here in this room. Anyway, come on, let's pray together. Lord, I thank you for every person. I thank you, Lord, for your goodness, your grace, and your mercy. And I thank you, Lord, that even at this moment, you have drawn people into your presence. It is by no mistake. It is by no accident. I thank you, Lord, for just the new people that are here this last few weeks, the people that you're bringing, and of course, our faithful team that serve over and over and over again. Pray for energy, blessing, and favor in every person. In your glorious name, amen. Amen. Okay, I want to read a verse to us today, or a few verses, churches, we're getting started. Hebrews chapter 1, we're going to read some verses together, uh, and we're going to talk about them in just a moment. But it's about a majestic Jesus. Verse 1 chapter 1, it says this, long ago at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom all also he created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God, the exact imprint of his nature, and he upholds the universe by the word of his power. After making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Wow. It's an incredible portion of scripture. Talking about the majesty of Jesus. Talking about the greatness of God. Talking about all the incredible things that God does and who he is. And we're going to look at this this morning. I want to whet your appetite with all that God has, and to draw you closer into his presence. But I want to share a few thoughts, just as we're getting into this, of what we've learned over this last week. Well, you know, sometimes you go into a week and you're not quite sure what's going to happen. Well, we went into this last week, we started some worship on Monday night, and we're like, well, what will happen? Well, a few things started to happen, I want to bring observation. The first one was this, is that more people turned up to worship than I thought would, would. Uh, more teams turned up to worship than I thought we would. We had just in a practical sense, people coming from local Elam Church, Portadown Elam, Cookstown Direction, coming from lots of different churches, coming in not just to worship, but to lead worship, just jumping in, wanting to be a part of what God is doing. It became so much bigger than just a few here. It became the ones and twos coming from different places saying, I want to jump into whatever the Lord is doing. It became friends coming from Belfast, coming from down south, coming from all sorts of different directions, not hundreds and thousands although maybe they should, but ones and twos who are just hungry for something more. And it is just like the kingdom of God, and it's just like God, that for the ones and twos that would come, he would set them ablaze, and then they would go and catch a fire to this nation. Come on, church, we're either going to pray about it forever and ever and ever, or we're going to jump in and say, Lord, use me, and then leave it to him. Because at some point in time, it, things just light up. At some point in time, Billy Graham just comes on the scene. At some point in time, Abbott Roberts just jumps on the scene. If you're unsure who these guys are, you Google them up later. But at some point in time, people just jump on the scene and God begins to use their lives. And here's the thing that we have no control of. Is it we're going to reach thousands or one? Are we going to reach the masses or just the few in front of us? It's not really our job to worry what it is. Our job is to be obedient and to jump in where the opportunities are. 
I mean, if I said to you, come meet me at 4 o'clock today, I'm going to give you a million quid, you know you're coming at 4 o'clock. You're like, wherever you are, I'm going to be. I mean, I'm not even going to tell you where I'm. You're going to harass me. You're going to get up me. In fact, you may not even leave me. You're like, you might just follow me around going, Wait, is it 4 yet? Is it 4 yet? But we get to come into the presence of God any time we like. And sometimes we forget. We're talking about majesty today. There's a famous song you may or may not remember. It's called Majesty, Worship His Majesty. Old song, older song. Maybe you know it. If not, Google it up later again. But here's how the story goes. The guy, Jack, who wrote the song, he went to England for the Queen's Jubilee, 25th Jubilee. And he got there and he was overwhelmed by the grandeur. He was overwhelmed like, wow, look at this person blowing a trumpet and this person standing here for hours and the gold and the silver and the carriages. He was just blown away. Couldn't believe it. And on the way back home, he started to think, Lord, Lord, what did I see? What was it that I saw? And he thought of that word, majesty. Now, that's a word that we're familiar with because we live here. We know his majesty now. It used to be her majesty. But in America, I mean, I don't know. Maybe you call your next door neighbor majesty, but they don't have kings and queens. So all they've got as reference is Disney. And maybe it just hadn't clicked with them. But he began to think of majesty. Okay, that's, that's a great word. And as he started to look into it, he started to realize, of course, Jesus is majestic. The Father is majesty. It's reserved only for kings and queens. It's reserved only for those that are high and above, that have no rivals, that everything else is underneath them. It speaks of Jesus. And he wrote that song, Majesty, Worship His Majesty. Because there is nobody else like him. And we've sang that song for years, and now there's other songs that speak of his majesty. But today I want to bring us close, and I want to say to you, when we get into the presence of God, things begin to change. Things begin to change. When you go and meet someone that is important, they impact your life. When you come into the presence of God, you change by accident. You change by pur on purpose. You change just because you're there, because you are with him. And I want to share some of the things that we learned this week. You know, I think well, part of what God's teaching us is that we've got to learn to enter the presence of God. You know, have you ever seen those programs? Maybe you watched Downton Abbey. Maybe that's your reference. Or you've seen one of these Disney shows, and they say, when you meet the queen or you meet the queen king, you've got to curtsy. And you go, how do I do that? And then you're like, uh, or well, you got to buy, or you got to do this, or you got to eat with this fork and this knife. You know, you got to learn to be around royalty because we're not brought up automatically like that. We're brought out the other end of the spectrum, eat with a fork and nothing else. You know, <laughs> eat and drink at the same time. You know, get it shoveled down as quick as you can because you got stuff to do. We are not used to being in royal company, so we have to learn how to be there. I want to say to you this morning, church, that we have to learn to be in the presence of God. Otherwise, we can find ourselves missing it, becoming complacent, going, well, is it not just like any other time? No. When we're with him, it's completely different. When we're with him, he has no need from us whatsoever. In fact, he's only there to listen and bless and encourage. Imagine being with him. Think about that just for a moment. How many people do you meet on a regular basis that they're not trying to get something from you? <laughs> it's just like, can you buy this? You know, can you come help me here? We're all at it. We're all at it. But when you come into his presence, he just loves you there. He doesn't need nothing. He's a God with no needs. Come on, he's majesty. He has absolutely everything he needs. So it's this beautiful relationship where he's just interested, can I hear from you? What is it you need? How can I help you? Uh, can I teach you some things? And he begins to bless and correct and encourage and build us up. Church, this is what I'm inviting you to, what we've seen over this last week. You know what I've noticed is that we've begun to... Uh, protect the presence of God. Uh, Nikki shared last week about the dove. She said that there was that old couple who went to Israel. Well, they're, uh, they're maybe not old at that point. I'm talking about an old story who went to Israel. And they find out there was a dove in their flat. And they said, what would it take to keep the dove with us? And they realized they'd have to live gentle. They realized they'd have to be quiet and protected. Well, you know what I've noticed this week? Simple things. I've noticed this week when people come into the presence of God, they would close the door gently. If the door was open, was closed. They would open it gently, they would go out and they would hold it. I just, just small things because just innately inside we're recognizing the presence of God is here. We, we, we're respecting it. We, we're, we're, we're reverencing this. We are mindful of it. We, we don't want it to go. We want the presence of God. We want to manage it. And I want to say to you that the presence of God has been training people. I have seen guys that have come on this stage, this small stage, it's not a big stage, but come on this stage and, and their voices just get stronger. Their plan has just got better. The, the anointing of God has come upon their lives, and things have just changed inside their hearts because the presence of God is here. Wow. 
You see, you can watch YouTube and get better. You can go to school and get better. Or you just sit in the presence of God and you come out 10 feet tall. I've tried that. I want to get taller. But, you know, God's still working on me. But I'm serious. You get into the presence of God. He, he trains you up. Do you remember Jesus? Where was he? In the early days? Just find the temple. Why is he in the temple? He's the presence of God. He is the presence. He's in the presence. He's with God. He is God. What's going on? It, he wanted to grow. He knew that the best place to grow on this planet is the presence of God. School's great. I love school. I mean, it's the best days of my life. I loved university. Best days of my life. I love to work. Incredible. It blesses me. But there's nothing quite like the presence of God. And today we are finding the presence of God because you know it's the manifest presence I'm talking about. The presence of God's everywhere. Like everywhere we go, the presence of God's there. But sometimes we have to remember, oh, the presence of God's there. Otherwise, it's like going for, could you imagine, uh, King Charles is sitting beside you and you're going for a ride in the car and you're just like, do you want to stop at the shop for sweets? No, like come on, this is the king. You got to remember this stuff, otherwise you'll get too familiar. You get too familiar. And of course, does the king mind if you talk to God? No, not really. I, I don't think he minds. But it's the people around him going, do you not realize he's the king? You're like, and it's for our benefit sometimes that we remind ourselves, he's friend, but he's also Lord. He, he, his, he's majestic in all his ways. His presence transforms and changes us. And it's not because he needs something. Remember, it's not because we have to give him what he's due. No, 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 no. It's because we need his presence. Because it changes us and it transforms us. And it reminds us, if God's for me, if the king of Judah is for me, if the, if the lion of the tribe of Judah is for me, then who can be against me? It reminds us that if there's any fear in us, get in the presence of God. Because there's nobody like him. I mean, if anybody's to be afre uh, feared, it's the Lord. In fact, what's the word said? It's the beginning of knowledge and wisdom, those that fear the Lord. Uh, do you remember Ananias and Sapphira in the New Testament? If you think it's just Old Testament, it says they were meant to bring everything that they had to, to the disciples. And they brought everything that they had, but they didn't realize. They didn't really. And in a moment, it says, before the day was out, they were dead and buried. Wow. You're going, okay, Lord, maybe I, maybe, maybe I need to get in your presence again. It's not about fear. It's not about pushing the person back. It's about drawing close and knowing that if he's with you, my goodness, you can overcome in every circumstance. It's about knowing that he trains you and equips you and he teaches you and he provides for you. And in his presence, he restores you. Church, can I just say this? Today we're just talking a bit and we're going to get to some verses in just a moment. But we have been given a wonderful gift. Gifts, our mind, our minds, our abilities to walk, talk, do whatever. But have you noticed how sometimes we find ourselves not using them for the kingdom of God. In fact, sometimes we use them to get one up on somebody or to tear somebody down or to just ignore God or to unsay something or not say something when we should have. But we've been blessed with all these gifts and abilities to be a blessing because we have received so much blessing. Come on, we are not people that's just going to take from heaven and hoard it up. We are going to be people that will take from heaven and we will multiply it and use it. The kingdom of God comes in seed form. It comes in small form. And then he says, if you would take what I give you and use it and bless it and do something with it, I'll multiply it. Come on, this is what the Lord wants to do with each one of our lives. Don't get distracted with other things. Don't let unforgiveness rule in your heart. Don't let other people dominate your thinking. Protect your time with him. Because we are here to bring transformation in every form. The Lord is with us. See, God has been revealing his glory this week. Revealing his glory. I want us to think about Hebrews 1, just for a few moments. Hebrews 1 that we just read, let me give you the context of the verse. You're Jew from Jewish descent. And if you've read some of the Old Testament, you know that Jewish people love the Lord. But they were waiting for a Messiah. They knew there was a Messiah to come. But unfortunately, when Jesus came, they never quite find the Messiah. But in Hebrews chapter 1, the writer to the Hebrews is writing to some people who were Jewish but find Jesus. It's incredible. They find Jesus. And they've been going steady with Jesus. And they've been going well with the Lord. But here's the context. When they find Jesus and give their lives to Jesus, people start to unfriend them. You see, you thought it was just Facebook and Instagram. People. No, they were unfriending people from, from the beginnings when people started to follow Jesus. People unfriend them just to stop speaking to them. Their friends, their neighbors, their family that they grew up with, generational connection with. And they just abandoned them. It says, no, no, you're not one of us anymore. They, they started to steal their property. They started to abuse them. They weren't physically killing anybody at that point in time. But they were abusing them with their words. They were taking their property. They were stealing from them. And the, these beautiful Jewish people that had found Jesus began to wonder, maybe he's just an angel. Is he really worth it? 
because our family won't speak to us. Our friends have turned against us. And all we did was we find the Messiah, the one that we were meant to be waiting for. We find him. In church, they believe it's Paul or someone who wrote it from Paul's message, Hebrews. And the writer writes to encourage brothers and sisters in the faith that it got so discouraged they were ready to give up on Jesus. Is anybody here today feeling the same way? Because I'm going to give you a solution that's going to fix the problem. It's exactly what the writer of the Hebrews did. You see, we can go through life and you say to yourself, man, I give my life to Jesus and life's just got harder. Like, I, I'm standing up for Jesus and my friends have turned against me. Like, I, I went for Jesus and my workmates, are, they're just not having it. Like, I have went for Jesus and it feels like my life has went down, not up. This is how these early disciples felt. These early Jewish believers in Christ felt. They are ready to give up. We're sick of it. I'm sick of being abandoned by my family. I'm sick of being swore at. I'm sick of being put down. I'm sick of having my stuff taken. And it's all because we find Jesus. Like, this makes no sense. Come on, our world is messed up. This is why we need him. This is why we need him. And the writer of the Hebrews comes to the people. And you know what he says to them over and over and over again? He says, you know what the problem is? You need to lift Jesus up higher. You need a better view of Jesus. You need to realize he is no angel. You need to realize that he will sustain you in that persecution. You need to realize that no matter what the problems that you're going through, Jesus is the solution. I'm not getting success in work. Don't turn away from God. Get stuck into Jesus. I, I can't find the person that I'm meant to be with. I'm looking for a loved one. Uh, no, no, stick close to Jesus. He will do all that he needs to do there. I can't get this situation turned around. I can't get the money that I need. I can't do this. I can't do this. The solution is always Jesus. The early disciples were ready to abandon. The early disciples were ready to go, but they stuck close to him. Why? Because they got a word that encouraged them just at the right moment. Just at the right moment. Let's read it again. Verse 2. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. The writer says it's all about Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Don't lose focus on him. Whom he appointed the heir of all things. Through him also he created the world. Come on, if he created the world, he can fix your mess. If he created the world, he can fix your problems. If he created the world, he can sustain you through your, your health issues. If he created the world, then he can provide a loved one or a spouse or a partner at the right time. And even if he doesn't, I've got it in him. He created the world. This is Jesus. He's incredible. He is the radiance of the glory of God, the exact imprint, exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power. See, church today, Jesus is glorious. He's king. He's Lord over everything. I want to share a quick story. I was reading this last few weeks. Uh, I read about a story, very successful pastor in America years and years and years ago. Uh, and unfortunately, this pastor got so successful that he decided to keep some money. <laughs> uh, and by the end of it, he got himself in trouble and he found himself in a jail cell. That is not a place anybody wants to be. Never mind a pastor or anybody. You do not want to be there. But he found himself in prison, and I don't know what he was feeling, but one day he heard of a new book that was out by a young pastor, and it was written about the holiness of God and the fear of the Lord. And he began to read this book, and he said, wow, I need to meet this guy. So he sent a message, and he asked the guy and said, would the guy come meet him? And eventually the guy goes to the prison, and he comes to meet him. And he says to him, hey, can you tell me one thing? He says, yeah. He says, did you write that book? He says, what do you mean? My name's on the bottom of it. I wrote the book. He says, no, 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 no. But I've been around long enough. Did you write the book or did someone write it for you and you just put your name to it? I'm like, wow, who knew about all these things? And he says, no, no, I wrote the book. And he goes, okay, can I ask you some questions? And the guy goes, certainly. But the young pastor turns around just at that moment. He says, but hey, sir, can I ask you one question? He says, sure. He said, when did you stop loving Jesus? Like, you know, you're in prison. You've made mistakes. You took people's money. You're in the wrong. I know you say you're guilty, you, you've owned up to it, you, I, I get all that, but when did you stop loving Jesus? He said, he says, son, I, I, I never stopped loving Jesus. He says, what you got to realize is I always love Jesus. I still love Jesus. I love Jesus when I was good. I love Jesus when I was bad. I love the presence of God. I, I love Jesus when I was taking people's money. I loved it. I loved him. I knew it was wrong, but I still love Jesus. But here's what I lost sight of. I lost sight of his majesty. I lost sight of his lordship. I lost sight that he's still king and he sees things. And he is my friend, but he's also my lord. I lost sight of that. And he said, son, what I want to encourage you with, don't ever lose sight of that. Don't ever lose sight of that. And so maybe you're asking the question, why do I need to come to the presence of God? Can't I just watch it on YouTube? Of course you can. But if you can drive or you can get a lift, come to the presence of God. Come on, if I was giving you a million quid at 4 o'clock, you're going to come find me. You're not even letting me out of the building. 
for when the presence of the Lord is here, it's richer than anything. The king dwells, and he reigns supreme. I'm going to finish with one last story. I'm going to get our worship team to come. Uh, they're, they do kids downstairs now, so they're bringing some worship and some fire down there as well. But I'm going to bring you to Isaiah chapter 1, and uh, chapter 6, sorry. And I want to talk to you about the presence of God and how it transforms. You see, Isaiah chapter 6, verse 8, it says this. Then I heard a voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? And I said, here I am, send me. Maybe you've heard this scripture before. It's famous. It's well known. Disciple, or you've got Isaiah and he comes to the Lord. He says, I'm ready to go. Send me, Lord. Send me. But can I give you the first part of the story? Because it's never that simple, is it? It's never that simple. And so first part of the story is this. Isaiah Isaiah comes to God and he gets a vision. And he gets a vision from God and this is what he sees. He says, I saw the presence of the Lord fill the temple. I saw the presence of the Lord. He didn't, he wasn't there actually, but he had a vision of it. He said, I saw the presence of the Lord fill the temple. And when I saw the presence of the Lord fill the temple, it changed me. It changed me. See, church, this is why sometimes we got to get into the presence of God because it does stuff in us that maybe we didn't even know was there. We get into the presence of God and it changes us in ways that we didn't even recognize that we needed to change. See, some of us have got sin going on in our lives. We don't even know it's sin. And some of us have got sin going on in our lives and other people have said to us about it, but we said, nah, no, 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 no. But you know what I love about the presence of God? He reveals it so gently, so great. And then he helps you to overcome. He helps you overcome. He's amazing. He's gracious. Every one of his words are gracious. I'm telling you this. If you met Jesus in those early days, you, every word is gracious. Even the words of correction. Even the words that would rebuke. They're so gracious. Therefore, you're good. Remember, he's got no needs. So he's not trying to get something for himself. He's only trying to see you fulfill your call and destiny. The one that he has been dreaming about. <laughs> says this. Verse 1. The year King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, seated on the throne. This is the vision that he got. See, King Uzziah was the king of Judah. And he took leprosy and he sadly passed away. And now God's looking for a mouthpiece. He's looking for a prophet. He's looking for a man or woman of God that is willing to stand for him. He's looking for a man or woman of God that's willing to speak for him and to speak in his behalf. And Isaiah begins to have this dream. It says this in verse 5. And notice what happens when you get into the presence of God. Isaiah says this, woe to me, he cried, woe to me, woe to me, because I am undone, I am ruined because of the presence of God. He said, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I am among people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. See, he knew about the Lord. Come on, he had read about the Lord. If you were in the, from a Jewish background, you know the first five books of the Bible, the Torah. You memorized it from a kid. You know everything about him. But when he came into his presence and he felt him and he understood the weight of him, suddenly he saw things that he didn't know was in him. And he got a shock, safe to say. He goes, I am undone, Lord. Woe to me, Lord, I am undone because I have seen the Lord. And I can see my lips and I can see everybody else's lips. And he got clarity. You ever had those moments where, I, I don't know, you're walking around and you didn't realize something was going on with you. And then someone said to you, you know you've got chocolate on your face. You're like, what? I didn't know. I just didn't know. You couldn't see it. But then you got clarity. And you're like, oh, gosh. Oh, Nutella, I like it. <laughs> Come on. You know, there are things that's going on in us that unless we get into the presence of God, we may never see them. We may never see them. Now remember, he doesn't point out to condemn. He doesn't point out to, to put you down. You begin to realize truth. You begin to realize truth. And God only ever does grace and truth together, mixed with lots of love. Lots of love. And here's what begins to happen. Isaiah sees this problem. And then verse 6, are you ready for this one? Then one of the seraphim, remember this is just a dream, but it starts to become reality now because the things of the Spirit start to enter into the present. And a seraphim is another name for uh, a, like an angel. Angel comes. You can Google all this stuff later. It says one of the seraphim flew to him with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongues from the altar. See, church, what have we been doing this week? We've been building an altar. Every day, 
every day, worshiping nonstop, building an altar. Why? Because an altar is where you sacrifice things. Now, the Old Testament, you sacrificed animals. In the New Testament, it's me and you. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Lord. But it's not to loss. It's to win. As we would lay down our lives and sacrifice ourselves, you will find something far better, far greater, far more amazing than you can possibly imagine or think. Here's what it says. With that t- coal, he touched my mouth and he said, See, this has touched your lips and your guilt is taken away and your sins are atoned for. Let's think just for a moment as we're finishing what just took place. Isaiah has got a dream. There's a problem in Israel. There's a problem in Judah. We need someone to speak for the Lord. The Lord's looking for somebody. And Isaiah comes into the presence of God and instantly in the presence of God, he begins to see his weaknesses. And as he sees his weaknesses, he does something really incredible. And don't miss this. He cries out about them. We've become far too good at hiding our weaknesses. We've become far too good at hiding our problems. And the only reason you hide is because of shame. It's the only reason you hide. Adam and Eve did it. Maybe you do it. But we're not called to hide. What does the writer of the Hebrews say? Come boldly before the throne of grace. The Lord already knows. And he doesn't need it, but you need it. Because if you don't declare it and you don't let it out into the light, guess who will use it? the enemy himself. Who are you? Do you think they will trust you when they know about this? Do you think that they will get you to speak for them when they've heard about that? When they find it, it's incredible the gymnastics we'll do in our heads. It's incredible the way the enemy will work against us. It's incredible how much we will defeat ourselves all in the pursuit of self-preservation. Pride. Pride before destruction. Every time. But Isaiah did something when he got into the presence of God. He said, I am undone. I am ruined, Lord. I am a woeful man. I am a woeful man. But notice what the Lord did. He changed him. He cleansed him. He fixed him. He sorted him out. And then we, be, we end where we started. Verse 8. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Who will go for me? And what does Isaiah say? With the same unclean lips that are now made clean, I will go, Lord. I will be your mouthpiece. I will be the one for you. Only the Lord can do this. Only him. Because what we would do is, well, when I get a bit better, I'll maybe try that, but I'll not go flat out. I'll, I'll do 10%. When, 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 I, when I went around the mountain a few times and I feel like people will be happy with me, then I'll go for it. No, Isaiah came into the presence of God. He was undone. He was ruined. The Lord touches him and cleanses him in a moment. And then he is commissioned. Go into all the world. It's the same context. It's the same verse. Matthew 28. Go into all the world, church. Set the captives free. Raise the dead. Set blind eyes opened. But Lord, I don't know if I'm good enough. Who cares? I am. I have touched your life. I have changed your heart. I have covered you in the blood of the Lamb. If anybody's got a problem with you, You know what to do. Send them to me. Send them to me. This is the Lord, church. This is the Lord. So I finish with this. Can you afford not to get into the presence of God? I think the cost will be too great. You need to get into the presence of God. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. Let's stand together. Thank you, Lord. Come on, we're going to pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your wonderful grace. Come on, just begin to talk to the Lord. Just begin to thank him. Thank you for your wonderful grace, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, your majesty. Thank you, Lord, I get to call your fr- call you friend. Wow. How on earth do we get to call him friend? Well, because heaven came. Heaven came. Heaven came. Why on earth, Lord, would you send the crown of heaven? Because you loved us so much. Because we were so worth it to you. Because we were so expensive that the only one that could pay it was Jesus himself. Lord, thank you for your mercy and grace today. Thank you for your anointing. Thank you for the richness of your presence, Lord. And Lord, I thank you that every day we can live in your presence. But there are some times where we simply need to come into the presence of the Lord or where he's already working. 
and we come in, and maybe we're not even sure why we come in. Here's why you come in. You come in for him. I come in for him. And so, Lord, I pray today that you would convict hearts. Why are we going to come meet together tonight and tomorrow, whenever we can, Wednesday night, of course, is available too. We're going to come for Jesus. We're going to come because he's worthy. We're going to come because we need to pour out. And in return, he's going to expose and renew. He's going to cleanse and commission. He's going to transform us. He's going to change us. He's going to encourage us. He's going to send us out. Lord, I thank you for a man like Isaiah who went before us, who revealed his issues to the world through the word of God. And the same word came back and touched his life forever. His greatest weakness became his greatest strength. His unclean lips became pure, white, and holy lips, fit to carry the word of God. Lord, this is who we are in you. This is who we are in you. And what more can we bring is our sweet worship and declare majesty.
Thank you, Jesus, for your goodness. Church, I want to encourage you today, if you need prayer for anything, I want us to pray together. Uh, we're going to close our time in just a moment, but if you need some prayer, then come to the front. We'd love to pray with you. We've got many people to pray. But I want you to understand that the Lord is gracious and kind. He never rejects. He never turns away. He's always full of forgiveness. He's always there. His patience is great. I want to encourage you that as you come into His presence, please do. Because He changes you. He changes you. If there's any form of rejection or lie or shame inside of you, then let the Lord lift it. Let the Lord take it. Give it to Him. He defeated it on the cross. He defeated it on the cross. Lord, I pray for every person. I pray for anybody that's far from you. The Bible teaches us in Romans 10 that if we would confess with our mouths and believe in our hearts that Jesus is Lord, then we will be saved. Our sins will be forgiven. Lord, I pray today for anybody that needs that. Put your trust in Jesus. I pray for anyone who's made that decision. Continue to put your trust in Jesus every day, every day, every day. Don't try to do it yourself. Don't try to go your own way. It never works. Trust them with every part, everything. Lord, let your gracious hand be upon every person, every family. Lord, let us see your favor and blessing. But Lord, we're not here just to consume. We're here to be commissioned. Commissioned into the harvest fields that are ripe that are white, that are ready. Lord, call us forward. Let us yearn to go forward with the goodness of God and tell people about your love. Lord, bless us today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Guys, I want to remind you of one last thing again, which is Alpha starts this Thursday. If you are in the area, please come to it. It's 7.15 to 8.45. It's really good. It's really great. If you're new today, Get out there and get signed up to our connections. It's 7.30 tonight. It's 7.30 tomorrow. And there is tea and coffee literally just being wheeled into you. So make sure to grab some of that. Thank you so much.